Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, good people of the DevOps world? Welcome once again to Let's Talk DevOps. And before anything else, I just want to sincerely say thank you so very much for all the appreciation and love that you have been showing for this series on our social media channels. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to us and encourages us to do more of such stuff. Today, we are here to talk about DevOps anti-patterns. And to help us know more about it, we are joined by Nikhil Yadav as our DevOps expert. Hi, Nikhil. How are you? Hey, Salesh. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here. Great. So uh, could you please uh, share with us a quick overview about DevOps anti-patterns? Sure, sure, Salesh. So as the DevOps movement gained velocity during the last years, many tried to adopt it for their organization. Since De DevOps is a rather complex topic, often entry patterns are established without even realizing about them. Those entry patterns involve many different aspects and often arise even if you try to establish good practice like shift left, improving traceability, or a generative culture. So you need to be very careful with your well-intended changes. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So what are the main anti-patterns that can possibly get overlooked? Broadly speaking, there are four anti-patterns which can easily get overlooked. First, trying to get more overlap between dev and ops could lead to creating a new DevOps silos while strengthening existing dev and ops silos. To avoid this, it is essential to deliberately prevent the formatting of new oracles around topics like CI, CD, and work on opening up existing team silos while bringing team close together. The second one is even well-intended DevOps transformation. If forced top-down can become a burden and spark resistance. Since team structures can become quite disrupted during those transformations. So fostering a transformation and generative Project culture is imperative for a sustainable DevOps transformation. Yeah. Third one is during a DevOps shift, quite an increase in transparency should be noticeable. This transparency can under no circumstances be used to exert pressure on the team. Transparency measurement and silos should always primarily serve the team to validate experiments and support continuous improvement efforts. Otherwise, this could lead to a significant loss in trust and is poison for the shift altogether. So okay. fourth is high performing teams, which are far on their DevOps adoption, have a very full velocity, which can lead to a high stress levels. It is important to make sure that those get some slack time now and in order to regenerate and not run into burnouts. Hopefully, Paying attention to these mentioned anti-patterns can help you identify hotspots early and act accordingly. Yes, indeed. And spotting such anti-patterns can be such a priceless and proactive asset for any organization. Thank you so much for these inputs, Nikhil. I'm sure this will be really helpful for everyone out there. Anytime, Salish. My pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. So friends, that brings us to the end of another episode of this enjoyable and insightful series. We really hope that you enjoyed this DevOps episode just as well <coughs> as we did in bringing it to you. Thanks for watching. Keep paying attention to any anti-patterns out there. Keep learning. And of course, keep talking DevOps. Bye for now.